It's time for Community Gospel Baptist Church on K99.3 WKVI. Brand new life, a brand new start. I'm clean now. The chain of sin have been taken away. I'm just like a newborn child. I'm born again. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. How are you this morning? This is the Gospel Revival Hour. I'm Pastor Paul Begley, and this is 30 Minutes of Power Pack Anointed Praise. We're broadcasting today from the studios at WKVI Radio. We just want to say good morning to everybody in the Kankakee Valley area. It's going to be a great time at Community Gospel Baptist Church. That's Community Gospel Baptist Church. We're located on the corner of New York and McGill Street in the heart of Knox, Indiana. Services this morning at 11 a.m. It's 403 McGill. We want to see you this morning. My dad, Pastor Charles Begley, is standing on the front porch with open arms welcoming you into the service today. It's a great time to come to the house of the Lord. And again, the services begin at 11 o'clock this morning. I, I just love to see us. So go ahead. You know I'm going to say it. Drink that last cup of coffee and get ready and say, yes, he's right. We're going to church today at Community Gospel Baptist Church. Services at 11 o'clock this morning. It's going to be a great time of fellowship, and we want you to be a part of it in Jesus' name. Everybody's welcome. Everybody's welcome. So praise the Lord. All right. Here's a song. Wake up some glad morning over in that promised land. Gonna sit down with all God's children, give and praise to the great I am. We'll be singing in a heavenly choir, joined by all the saints of world. What a glorious morning! Morning, morning. When we walk on the street of gold, when he splits that eastern sky. Changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. No more parting over there, no more burdens we shall bear. For the glorious morning when all the saints get there. When I wake up, some glad morning over in that promised land. Gonna sit down with all of God's children, giving praise to the great I am. We'll be singing in a heavenly choir, joined by all the saints of what a glorious morning, 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 when the rock on the street of gold, when the trump of God shall sound, don't look for me around, I'll be caught up to meet him in the air, what a sad time that would be, if you haven't been set free, what a glorious morning when the Lord he calls for me. Some glad morning over in that promised land Gonna sit down with all God's children and give you praise to the great I am We'll be singing in a heavenly choir joined by all the saints of world What a glorious morning, morning, morning When we walk on the street of gold When I wake up, wake up, wake up
Williams Tree and Stump Removal is a quality service all year round. Ray Williams and the Williams Tree and Stump Removal can take care of all your needs when it relates to that big oak tree that's sitting by the corner of the house. You're afraid it's going to fall on your home in those high winds this spring. What about when we do have those windy spring March days and the storm and limbs are everywhere and what about that ugly stump that it's been sitting there you've been mowing around it it's time to grind that thing up and get rid of it who do you call call Williams tree and stump removal it's a full line tree service give them a call that's Williams tree and stump removal that's 574-946-7687 let me say that again that's 574-946 76 87 that's Williams tree and stump removal let him cut all them limbs let him grind up them stumps remove that big oak tree no job is too big or too small that Williams tree and stump removal can't handle that's 574 946 76 87 or call the 1-800 number 1-800-860-0350 that's 1-800 860-0350 Williams Tree and Stump Removal Let them take care of your tree removal needs Pastor Paul has asked me to remind you Sunday School is at 10 a.m. The youth group meets on Sundays from 3 to 5 p.m. That's a new day and time. And there is church on Friday nights at 6 p.m. Mark your calendar for October 19th, Friday at 6 p.m. There'll be special singing with Doug and Faye Griffith. Then on October 21st, Sunday, it's Pastor Appreciation Day with dinner following the service. Everyone is welcome. And now here's Pastor Paul with today's sermon. Turn to Jonah, the Bible, and go right to Jonah in chapter 1, verse 1. And the Bible says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Abitai, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it for their wickedness is come up before me but Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and he went down to Joppa and he found a ship going to Tarshish so he paid the fare thereof and he went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord You can run, folks, but you can't hide. Now, the Bible said, and the Lord will let you run even, but you can't hide. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God, and they cast forth the wares that were in the ship, into the sea to lighten it from them but Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship he lay and was fast asleep so the shipmaster came to him and said to him what meanest thou O sleeper arise and call upon thy God if so be that God will think upon us that we perish not they're getting desperate they're getting so desperate that they're asking everybody to cry out to their God. And they said, everyone to his fellow, come, let us cast lots that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. Because see, when they took the set sail, the report, the weather report was clear sailing. And you might have started out in life with the full intentions of never getting into a scrape, never getting into any problems. Everything looked like you had your life completely mapped out just right. Because you can run, but you can't hide. And the Bible said that as they were there, they told the fellows this. And they said, everyone to his fellow come, let us cast lots that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast the lots. And the lot fell upon Jonah. Sort of like, I want to say like dice. They had a certain kind of block and they would cast it and start and do a process of elimination and finally it would wind up to one person. 
and when they get done with it they think maybe that's the person that's, that's causing the problems and they did all this and it fell on Jonah then said they unto him tell us we pray thee for whose cause this evil is upon us what is thine occupation and whence comest thou who are you Jonah what is your country and of what people art thou tell us what you who are you Jonah why are you on this boat with us in the first place are you, the, we've cast the lot and the lots fell on you we want to know are you in a trouble are you in some kind of problem have you done something that's not right what's brought this bad luck on us how many believe in luck I don't some people believe in bad luck good luck I don't believe in any luck I believe in being blessed or cursed and, and this is what's happened to them is a curse has come upon them because of his disobedience and the Bible said he said to them I am a Hebrew I fear the Lord the God of heaven which thou has made the sea and the dry land then were the men exceedingly afraid and they said unto him why hast thou done this for the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee, that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea is wrought, in that it's temptuous. And he said unto them, Take me up, and cast me forth into the sea. So shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to the land. They fought the weather. They fought the sea. They fought the tide and the waves. But they could not, for the sea wrought and was tempestuous and against them. Wherefore, they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life. And they laid upon us innocent blood. For thou, O Lord, hast done as it is pleased. So they took up Jonah and they cast him forth into the sea. And the sea ceased from raging. They finally gave up all hope and threw him overboard. And the moment he hit the water, the Bible tells you that the sea stopped. The waves settled right down. A peace and a calm came. I'm going to tell you something right now. If you keep going against the grain, you keep going against God, it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. If you want a calm to come in your life, give your life to Jesus Christ. Start doing what God wants you to do. Start doing what the Word is willing to bless you for. Start doing the right thing and watch and see what God will do. Somebody said, well, I would go to church. I would get right. I would start getting saved. But I've got this wrong and that wrong. And I've got to stop this and stop that. And once I get it all cleaned up, then I'll go to church. You'll never get here if that's the case. The only way you're ever going to give your life to Christ is to come as you are, just as I am. Come just like you are. You can never get good enough to be saved. You can never clean yourself up and up. You can never. And matter of fact, praise God. Hallelujah. When you get saved, you're kept by His power. You're kept by His mercy. And you're kept by His grace. Praise the Lord. He's carrying us. Praise the Lord. We can't save ourselves. We can't even keep ourselves. The only thing we can do is trust in Him. And if we trust in Him, He'll bless us going in and going out. He'll fill us with the power of God. He'll give us victory in the jaws of defeat. And we can lift up our hands and praise the Lord. And so they threw Him overboard. He landed in the water. And instantly the water stopped raging. And then the men feared for the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. They all got saved. Praise the Lord. I mean, sometimes you have to go through some stuff to realize you need help. They didn't have, they never did think. They probably would have never got right if they hadn't run into the trouble with Jonah. Praise the Lord. Some of you in your life, you may run into things, you may meet people at work. You may meet people along life's journey and, and you had no intentions of getting right with God, no intentions of giving your life to Jesus, but you ran, you had an encounter. You had a close encounter of a God kind. You ran into somebody who was filled with the love of God and it rubbed off on you. And praise the Lord, there was something about what they had you wanted. And praise God, if you call upon the Lord, you shall be saved. Woo! Praise the Lord. If I told, told you right now there was a million dollars that we we're going to hand out to the, the first person that ran to the altar, well, Bert would probably be first if he didn't grab you by the hair of the head and she got there before all of them. Come on, somebody. 
Folks will do anything if they think they're going to benefit from it. But see, the devil paints a picture that coming to Jesus is the end of your life. Coming to Jesus, you'll lose out on all your fun. Coming to Jesus, you're going to have to settle down. Uh, you know, you won't be looking for all your friends in low places. Coming to Jesus, uh, you're going to lose out. You're going to miss out. I'm going to tell you what you're going to miss out on. You might miss out on a hangover, but you can get a Holy Ghost high. Come on, somebody. You might miss out on somebody getting happy about somebody beating somebody, but I get happy watching somebody come to Jesus and getting washed in the blood. Amen. Woo! Praise the Lord. I tell you what, it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. The half has never yet been told. They think they're having a good time every year at the Super Bowl. They enjoy themselves. They throw parties all over the nation. They pile into bars and taverns and praise the Lord. They do everything and they bet, they bet big money in Vegas. It gets completely crazy. Praise the Lord. But I like it when a few God-fearing people get in the house of the Lord who are centered upon the fact that one day we're going to leave this world and praise the Lord. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fill the house of God. Woo! Praise the Lord. I know it looks crazy when we took people and baptized them in water. They come out shouting. It might have looked a little foolish for the eunuch. He was in that desert. Think about it. Here he is sitting in a chariot. Been to Jerusalem all week for the feast. And was headed back into Gaza. Brother Leonard, praise the Lord. Reading from the book of Isaiah. For a sheep before his shears was dumb. And he opened not his mouth. He was stricken and smitten of God. A man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. He's read that thing and I wonder who it's talking about. I wonder who the prophet Isaiah was talking about. And then all of a sudden here come a preacher who'd been preaching for weeks in Samaria full of the Holy Ghost and he walked up and said, hey, do you understand what you're reading? He said, how can I? There ain't nobody, I, I, nobody here to guide me. I ain't got nobody to help me. And he just jumped in the chariot. <laughs> Woo! He wasn't, <laughs> Philip wasn't running from God. <laughs> Philip was running with God. Yeah. Big difference. Big difference. Are you on fire for God? Well, you know, I got saved. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Uh, one guy said, you go to church? Yeah. I said, where do you go? Uh, honey, what's the name of that place? That's not good. I'd say, well, who's the pastor? Well, he's a good guy. That's not good. And a lot of times you ask people, get your Bible. We'll, we'll look it up. And they'll say, but honey, where's my Bible? I had it with me at church a month ago. She says, you probably left it on the pew. But if you lose the remote, you'll flip the recliner over to find it. Huh? Well, praise God. Where your treasures, there will your heart be also. Come on. The reason we're in the shape we're in, we're not going to Nineveh. We're on a boat headed for Tarsus. And I'm going to tell you right now, you can run, folks, but you can't hide. And so Jonah got in a shape right here. And they said, hey, we got to do something with this guy. We're going to ever one perish. So they took him and they threw him overboard. He hit the water and the sea calmed right down. And they were so exceedingly fearful of the Lord that they offered a sacrifice and made a vow unto God. Woo! Now the Lord had prepared a great fish up to swallow up Jonah. It was a big whale. Jesus called it a big whale. You can imagine. And so Jonah hit the water. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Woo! This is not good. This was not part of the plan when he bought the ticket in Joppa to go to Tarshish. He had no intentions of ending up in the belly of a whale. Seaweed wrapped around his head. I mean, it's an ugly situation. You're down there in the belly of a whale. Pitch dark, slimy, slippery. What? Not good, praise the Lord. You're going to need more. You're going to need some. I don't know what he was thinking at that point. You, you're in trouble. You know you're in trouble. You don't have to ask anybody, am I in trouble? You know you're in trouble. And the Bible said he was three days and three nights. And look what it says, verse 17. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. In the next chapter, then Jonah prayed unto the Lord, his God out of the fish's belly. Uh, what in the world, Brother Bert? Three days, three nights, then Jonah prayed. He didn't pray. I would have been praying within the first three seconds. The minute I landed on that 
big whale's tongue, I'd have said, "Uh uh-uh, help me, Jesus. But this guy was so stubborn and was was so full of pride and was so convinced he was going to do it his way that he would rather get swallowed in the belly of a whale wrapped in seaweed in the slippery, slimy darkness and for three days and nights before he ever prayed. You see, pride comes before the fall. Be sure your sin will find you out. And the soul that sinneth shall surely die. And if you keep trying to run from God, trust me, you can run. He'll let you run a little while, but you can't hide. He'll find you. And the Bible said, and then he cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me out of the belly of hell, cried I, and thou hearest my voice. This wasn't a vacation. He wasn't on a carnival cruise. It was hell. I heard him say the other day that one of those boats got stranded out there in the ocean for like six days. All the power went out. The toilets didn't work. There was no running water. 2,000 people. That's not my ideal of a vacation. I mean, that's not good. But that, was, that would have been a vacation compared to the shape Jonah was in. And it's one thing to be in the belly of the well. It's another thing to be in the belly of hell because you're not going toward heaven. You're headed in the wrong direction. It's one thing to be sitting in the drunk tank down at the county jail. It's another thing to be on the edge of eternity ready to fall right on into the pits of hell. There's a whole big difference. And a lot of folks don't realize just how close they are from going to judgment. They think they've got plenty of time. They've got, a, they've got a stake set out. But have you not been to the cemetery lately? Have you not attended any funerals of folks younger than you that are already gone? I'm telling you right now, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. This is the time. Uh, you know, <laughs> don't put off tomorrow what the Lord can do for you today. I'm telling you right now, don't wait too late. You can run, but you cannot hide. I'm going to shorten it real fast. Here's what ends up happening to Jonah. He prays unto the Lord. He repents of his sin. He calls upon God. And the Bible said that the the Lord spake in verse 10. And the Lord spake unto the fish and it vomited out Jonah on dry land. They said they found a whale one mile from the uh, the Mediterranean Sea in Israel last year one mile from the water there's no possible way a whale can get one mile from the shore into the middle of the wilderness now there's no way unless somebody hooks up a ford pickup truck and pulls that thing i don't even know if ram rams i don't even i don't even know if we got a truck big enough to pull a whale there's no way the problem is there was no drag marks nobody had sent a crane out how did the whale get in dry land and a guy had called me and asked me, he said, what are you going to do with that bag? I said, I'm going to go to the book of Jonah. The Lord just said he, was, he coughed him out on dry land. If he can cough him out, he can cough anybody else out. God doesn't have to just only do what you think. God's bigger. He, look, he created this thing. If he wants a whale to go out a mile, if he wants to take Jonah way out, out, way past the shore and cough him up on dry land, he'll do it. I don't know. I just know this. When he got up, he, went, he didn't go toward Joppa. He didn't go toward Tarshish. He went straight to Nineveh. And he made things right with God. And God will get you out of trouble if you're willing to give your life to Him. But you have to be willing to repent. You can run, folks, but you can't hide. I'm going to ask the singers to come. And, and as they come tonight, today, as the pastors come, I want to ask you, you know, whether you're a eunuch in the desert like Dad was preaching about, who was seeking God, or whether you're Jonah who was running from God, either way, God will find you. Whether you want Him to or not, He'll find you. Now, if you'll seek the Lord while He may be found and call upon Him while He's near, it's a whole lot better on you than if He hunts you down. Because if He hunts you down, it won't be pretty. But it will still be mercy because it's not his will that any should perish, but all come to repentance. If he hunts you down, it may not be pretty, Dad, but it will still be mercy. Because somewhere your mama's praying, save my boy. Somewhere your grandmother said, Lord, save all my children and my grandchildren. Somewhere somebody was praying for you. 
And even though we might be going in one direction completely rebellious against the word of the Lord, the Lord still loves you so much. He's trying every way he can to turn you in the right direction. And you want to have joy in your life? Come to Jesus. You want to live victorious? Give your life to Christ. You want to have a happy home? Find Jesus and put him in the middle of it. Watch and see if you won't be blessed. Somebody asked me because my... This, a couple, a few days ago, it was the 34th anniversary of the day I asked Heidi if she would go steady with me. And every year, on the 26th of September, every year I've not failed. Thank you, Jesus. I've always walk up to her and say, Honey, will you go steady with me? Now, we've been married 30 years. But I want to hear her say, Yes, you're my boyfriend. I want to hear that. I just want to hear that. I already know it, but I want to hear, hey, do you know that God loves you so much? He just wants to hear that. He just wants to know if you'll call his name. He, he already knows, but he wants to hear that because he loves you and he'll set you free. I'm going to ask you to stand right now, if you will, right now. In Jesus' name, as the preachers are coming forward. Praise the Lord. Brother Mike, come up here too. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Amen. I'm telling you right now. You can run, but you can't hide. You can't outrun God. And you don't really want to. I've, I've, I've met a lot of folks that weren't saved, but good people. Who really were thinking about the Lord. But it wasn't until they came into contact with the Spirit of the Lord that they really began to take an inventory of their life. And they began to think about where they're going to spend eternity. And I'm going to tell you something else. It's not just whether you go to heaven or hell, but it's how much joy you can have in this life. You can have real joy. You can have a real family if you give your life to Jesus Christ. You can have everything turn around. It, it, look, it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. There's people all over this church and around the community will tell you the best thing they ever did in their life was get saved. I've never met a person yet that said, I wish I'd never got saved. Even those that have backslid and went away from God say, I wish I'd never backslid. They all say, I'm glad I got saved. So if you're here today and you want to repent, you want to come to the altar, you want to give your life to Christ, I'm going to ask you to do something right now maybe you've never done in your life. I'm going to ask you to walk down, kneel at this altar, and let's pray with you. You might say, Pastor, I don't even know what to pray and what to say. Don't worry. Don't worry. We'll help you do that. You just come with your whole heart. And the Lord said, I'll be found with you. You come repenting of your sins and say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I've got sin in my life and I, I need to change and I need help and I need you to save me. You come like that. Watch and see what God will do. It, there'll be a change. In your life. The guilt will leave. The peace will come. And you have a brand new start. Do it right now in Jesus' name. When I wake up sometime morning over in that promised land. Gonna sit down. With all of God's children giving praise to the great I am. In a heavenly choir joined by all the saints of love. What a glorious morning. morning, morning. When we walk on the street of gold. When he splits that eastern sky, all the saints will say goodbye. We'll be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. No more partying over there. No more Choir joined by all the saints of God.